Racism runs in Fuentes' family? The La Grange Park resident says his father resisted restaurants believed to have connections to the black community. Nicholas Fuentes, the nationally known La Grange Park resident who promotes racism, points to his parents as sharing his hatred of African Americans. A couple of weeks ago, Patch reported how Fuentes had his mother, Lauren Fuentes, on his podcast last December. She suggested in vague terms that she knew the flavor of those responsible for the shooting at the Oak Brook Center Mall. That was before the police made any arrests. In response, Fuentes, who was student body president of Lyons Township High School before graduating in 2016, said his mother was calling out blacks. Where do I get it? He said, laughing. His mother laughed, too, joking, I have no idea. You get it from your dad. Maybe that's right. In another episode of his podcast, Fuentes said his father, Bill Fuentes, would not take his family to certain restaurants because he believed they were associated with African Americans. We would be deciding where to go to eat. What are we going to get for dinner tonight? It was a running joke. Me and my sister would say Applebee's, and my dad would say we will never eat at Applebee's, Fuentes said. Not in a million years should you be caught dead, Fuentes said about Applebee's. Go to a different restaurant, a local restaurant. No Applebee's. No Red Lobster. That is commonly known as Black Fair. Fuentes also shared another story about his family and restaurants. Before me and my sister were born, my family had a saying about Olive Garden that contains the N-word that we're not allowed to say, that my parents wouldn't say around me and my sister about Olive Garden's relationship with black people. It contains a bad word. It contains a naughty word, so I'm not going to repeat it here. We don't eat there. Bill Fuentes, who works for a Roselle company, did not return a message for comment at his work Thursday morning. Nicholas Fuentes gained national attention last month when he and rapper Kanye West, now known as Yeah, met with President Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago in Florida. In a podcast last year, Fuentes said Trump was awesome because he was racist and sexist. But he lamented Trump was not anti-Semitic. Yeah has also made anti-Semitic comments. We've got the leading presidential contender for the Republican nomination in 2024. This holiday weekend, having a nice Thanksgiving dinner with Kanye West, the rapper who just lost all of his corporate sponsorship deals when he started saying he was going to go DEFCON 3 on the Jews. The leading Republican presidential candidate, their last president, Donald Trump, just hosted Mr. West this weekend. Uh, and also this man for a uh, what was apparently a very nice Thanksgiving dinner at the pre former president's home. And uh, and it sucks and it is what it is, but that's why we need uh, dictatorship. <laughs> that's unironically why we need to get rid of all that. We need to take control of the media or take control of the government and force the people to believe what we believe. That's why we need a dictatorship. Force people to believe what we believe. We need a dictatorship, unironically. So that clip is um, from People for the American Way. They have a project called Right Wing Watch, where they monitor and document what's going on on the ultra right, on the far right fringe. Um, and that's a great public service all of the time. I'll tell you, it becomes a fire alarm system for the whole country when someone from that fringe, someone from that far out on the political spectrum, ends up having a Thanksgiving dinner with the Republican Party's leading candidate for president. Here's the pathway. We have one more election where white people can make the decision. The white people got to make the right decision and then Trump's got to get in there and never leave. That, to me, at this point is a pathway. It's time to shut up, elect Trump one more time, and then stop having elections. We have got to talk about the fundamentals of our worldview and what it would look like to build a society based on our distinct worldview. It looks like a society where women don't have the right to vote. And it looks like a society where boys and girls get married as teenagers and start having kids. And they don't use birth control and they don't use contraceptives. And they have big families and a high birth rate. And it looks like women wearing veils at church. And it looks like Women not being in the workforce. Banning gay marriage is back on the menu. Banning sodomy is back on the menu. Banning contraceptives is back on the menu. And basically, we're having something like Taliban rule in America in a good way. 
we're having something like a Catholic Taliban rule in America. Who cares? You know, enough with the Jim Crow stuff. Who cares? Oh, they had to drink out of a different water fountain. Big f deal. Oh no, they had to go to a different school. Their water fountain in that famous picture was worse. Who cares? Grow up. Drink out of the f water fountain. It's just water. It's the same. You know, and, uh, you know, even if it was bad, who cares? Who cares? It's better. It's better in general. We all agree. It's better. It was better. Jim Crow segregation, it was better. Almost all of that was posted by uh, People for the American Way, their project Right Wing Watch, which monitors stuff like this on the far right, which is usually only of interest to people who study the far right. But it suddenly becomes totally relevant to everyone else in the country when a guy like that suddenly ends up invited to the home of the Republican Party's leading presidential candidate to have a private Thanksgiving dinner with him. That guy and former President Donald Trump. I should tell you, he is also a Holocaust denier. I'm not going to show you those clips of him denying the Holocaust, but they're there. Um, he not only explicitly calls for the imposition of a dictatorship in this country, he's explicitly praised Hitler. He says Jewish people should not be allowed to participate in the U.S. government. And now he's having a nice private dinner with the man most likely to be the next Republican nominee for president of the United States. The reason groups like People for the American Way monitor guys like this and keep track of what they are saying and doing is not just because a guy like this might have an incidental effect someday on some real politician who interacts with them. No, the reason that it is worth keeping track of Holocaust-denying racist agitators who advocate race war and, I kid you not, burning women alive in America, the reason you... The reason you monitor guys like that is not just because of their potential future impact someday on other people who have power. It's because of their power and because of the damage that they want to do. It is hard to have regular, everyday, normal politics alongside this kind of politics, too. But that's where we are. And the violent ultra-right will benefit greatly from this moment, whether or not any right-wing politicians do as well. Nick Fuentes, I never heard of the guy, but he's a 24-year-old virgin who was one of those very fine people on both sides. And that wasn't a joke. In Charlottesville. <laughs> he's one of these great replacement theory guys who says Jews and other minorities are trying to wipe out white culture. He's an election denier. He's an anti-vaxxer. He's all the bad things. But I think this, more than anything, sums this gentleman up. What, people calling me gay because I've never had a girlfriend? I think, if anything, if anything, it makes me less gay. Never having a girlfriend, never having sex with a woman, really makes you more heterosexual. Because honestly, dating women is gay. <laughs> having sex with women is gay. And having sex with men is gay. And, and you know, it's really, it's all gay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Christmas episode, by the way. <laughs> He, the Fuentes made a statement today saying Trump didn't know who he was and he didn't mean to bring any negative attention. Look, you know it's a bad sign when Kanye is only the third most controversial person at your dinner table, okay? So what have we learned today? What have we learned today? What have we This video is, in particular, this video is for the followers of Nick Fuentes. Those people who subscribe to Nick Fuentes, the, who listen to him uh, whenever they get a chance, those people who, who gravitate towards him. This video is for them. Nick Fuentes is leading people down a path of utter destruction, chaos, and death. Nick Fuentes is leading people down a path of utter destruction, chaos, and death. Now, I'm not just talking about his rants about Christian nationalism. I'm not just talking about his desire to, to suspend the Constitution and the laws of the United States. I'm not just talking about his desire to install a Roman Catholic Church as the government and to be rid of Protestantism, wherever it may appear. 
not just talking about his rants and his ravings about the LGBTQ community. I'm talking about his anti-Semitism. I'm talking about his attitude towards the Jewish people. So if you're following Nick, if you're following Nick Fuentes and you think, wow, this guy, yeah, he's got it going on. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Please understand what he's talking about is your spiritual destruction. That's what he's playing with. He's playing with your life. He's playing, playing with your relationship to God. He is encouraging you for his own self-satisfaction. For his own, to feed his own insecurities. He is encouraging you to step away from the beautiful, wonderful, adventurous life that Jesus is asking you to live to step up against the one who created you, the divine, to step up as opposition to God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you know the peace, the power of being in God's presence. I pray that as we hear messages like this from Nick Fuentes, as as we hear messages from people like him that call us to, 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 to give ourselves to a mission that would put us in opposition to the children of Israel, that we would reject it. That we would see it as utter folly. That we would see it as, as completely sinful. Self destructive. That we would see it as, we would see it for what it is, the path of our spiritual death. And that we would reject it and turn back to the light that is Christ. Amen.